Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's feeling healthy and happy. And I hope this assignment uh, is something you enjoy. So today we're going to do a uh, talk about the design process by watching a design squad video. So just a little introduction on this worksheet. You guys have access to this on Google, in through Google Classroom. And uh, so introduction, read through that. You guys can read, so I don't need to go through it. But basically, designing and solving problems can be done by anybody and everybody. And it doesn't uh, specifically speak to engineers or architects. It's for any 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 problem. So let's keep moving forward. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, watch the PBS uh, Kids Design Squad teams uh, uh, create a hot dog dispenser. So. Which video did we watch? Well, let's take a look at it. This is the video. So for number one, if you need to pause this video and get the document open so you can type in number one, uh, is no crying in baseball. So that's our, pause this again if you need to fill in number one, but go ahead and type or type in or write in no crying in baseball. Question number two, let's take a look at that. Question number two, talks about uh, describe the problem challenge that was given to the team. So let's start watching the video and see what challenge they have for today. something. I think our client would probably agree. Roll it. We got him right here. Hot dog. Nothing but the best. Don't be shy. Coming by at the dog pound here. Welcome to the Little Spinners Baseball Club. I'm the dog man, the world famous. <laughs> I'm so famous, I have my own baseball card. I'll give you an autograph. I sign more autographs than the ball players. <laughs> Hi, I'm JC Dawn, and I'm standing here with the dog man. How are you tonight? There you go, pal. We have uh, golden retrievers, that's with mustard. One with ketchup, a bloodhound. <laughs> And then we even have C&I dogs for the Empire. We got another one coming up. Woo. I have everything that a hot dog lover would like. But there's one thing I don't have. These onions, raw onions. Get raw onions? This is where you come in, Design Squad. I want you to build me a chopped onion dispenser. It has to be safe, fast, efficient, battery or hand operated. And most of all, I don't want my dog crying. So I don't need the juice. I need just the onions. I will use the winning onion dispenser right here. The world. All right. So now we can look back at question uh, two and three and the challenge that was given to them. Basically make a raw onion uh, dispenser, chopped raw onion dispenser. So you need to write that in or type that in. You can also, if you need to pause the video, you can do that anytime. You can list the criteria and constraints that were given to the teams. And we're going to hear them again when we restart the video. Um, but we can also rewind this and look at it there. Uh, but the guy said that it needs to be safe, efficient. So you can put those things down. Definitely food safety would be an issue, I would think, for him. Uh, it's got to be um, no liquid. And it can't be um, plugged in. So it has to be battery or hand operated. So again, we're going to hear those things again. But make sure that's typed in for question three. Famous dog pound at Alaska Fox. Design squad, good luck and don't blow it. Oh my God. What do you think? 
<laughs> you just look of horror on Daisy's face. Oh, man. All right, let's review the specs. You're going to build an onion dispenser for the hot dogs, crank operated or battery operated. Now, most importantly, it doesn't want any juice coming out, just the onions themselves, okay? Any questions? Yeah. Do we have to build anything to chop the onions? No, the onions are pre-chopped. It's only a dispenser. Everything you need is in your workspaces. So what are you going to do when you get in there? Go straight to the building. Look. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do when you get into your workspaces? Check the stuff out. Check stuff out. Thank you, Leah. Go start brainstorming. <laughs> All right, guys. So now let's take a look at uh, the next section of our worksheet. If we scroll down, uh, go to uh, question number four. The first thing we see here is the uh, des design process graphic organizer that Project Lead the Way gave us. Um, define the problem is step one. Uh, step two is generate concepts. Step three is develop a solution. Step four is construct and test the prototype. Step five is evaluate the solution. And step six is present the solution. So in this step, what we're going to do is keep track of what each team does in the description part of the table below. So let's take a look at the table below. <clears throat> Here's the description part. We have the green team here on the left, the purple team here on the right. You're going to type in or write in a description of some of the things you see them do. And if you want, just watch the video and go ahead and type those things in or write those in and then come back later, or as you're doing it, you can go ahead and do this next part. Let's see what the next part thing. Each thing they do gets a design process number for which part of the design process you think it belongs. So for example, if you describe something here and you think it's when they were generating ideas, you would put, or generating concepts, you would put a number two here because that's the second step in this design process that Project Lead the Way put, gave us. Okay, so again, if you think they're at the end of the show, maybe in there or anytime doing the, actually, let's do this one. If you describe, you know, they're building a prototype um, or they're building something, be more specific in your descriptions, uh, don't just say prototype, then you would go ahead and type in or write in number four here for the process number that they're doing, which is step four, as we can see right here. Step four is construct and test prototype. Now remember the design process, or if you're first hearing about this, maybe because you're absent or I haven't gone over this yet, um, the design process goes in a loop. So sometimes you come down to find the problem, you generate concepts, maybe you have to go back up and redefine the problem as you're coming up with ideas, something you didn't think of came up. Uh, or maybe you get you know a solution and so you start developing that solution and, and, and you realize that something's not right. So you have to kind of go back up and come up with a different idea. So this design process does have cycles in it. There can be times where you construct a one prototype, you come back up and you have to come up with different ideas for that part of your whole solution. Maybe your whole solution, you made a prototype for part of it and you need to kind of fix that part. So you come back up here. So there's uh, all different ways that this can go. It's not just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six and be done. It's gonna go one, sometimes three, sometimes one, sometimes four, two, um, can go kind of around a little bit, um, especially when you're looking at doing things like they're going to be doing in the video where they don't have computer aided drawings and that kind of stuff to, to make sure that everything's going to work together. So they might construct a prototype as they're coming up with some ideas. We'll see. Okay. Hope that helps you explain. Uh, what I'm looking for here is you guys to fill in five uh, descriptions, five things for each team. So 10 total, five for the purple, five for the green, and then give them the process number. Now this is a 25 minute video or 20 minute video at this point. Are you, and this took them two days to do. So are you going to see everything that they do? Well, the answer to that is no. So you might not see every part of the design process. Um, you can make some inferences if you want of what you think they might've done to get to the point where they you know, did something on the screen. But um, yeah, go ahead and fill this out with things that you see or that you think they did, and then discuss what design process number or step that goes in. All right, let's go back to the video. Oh, wow. Onion. Yeah, you can already smell it, yeah. What if like the onions are sitting on this thing? Oh, you done 
is all stainless steel, so it should be food safe. Oh, Let's right. see <laughs> that corkscrew thing. Rechargeable batteries. Whoa. Let's open it up. No, no. <laughs> Go ahead. So you can see uh, they already started looking at some of the materials and in that process, they started talking about some ideas that they're having about how things might fit together uh, and generating concepts and maybe even making a little bit of a prototype by folding the mesh around and, and using the screw in their hands. We want to have a controlled amount. We don't want someone to like take their hot dog and, and like open the hatch and then all of a sudden there's a we huge pile these, of onions on the ground. We got our holding tank. And then from here, get the little screw thing. Tank. And right about here, just open. So a person puts hot dog here, turns the crank. Onions that are in here, pull down the gravity, spin through here, fall down on the hot dog. I really like that design. All right, so this is the purple team. They use a purple pen, so that's going to help you if you can't see their shirts. Uh, this is the purple team. You can see that they just did a drawing. Uh, but also they were you know, talking about things and, and coming up with ideas kind of at the same time. And maybe they need to draw to explain their idea as this one kid did. So who knows if they're already um, you know, developed a solution uh, or if they're still kind of generating ideas, they're kind of doing maybe a little bit of both at the same time. Do you want to get some onions out and test the tube and the scoop? Yeah. You just go like this, and then you, then you have some onions just falling out. You just want them to fall out on your hot dog. Right. All you have to do is drill a hole or something, make a hopper. You would definitely want it hand operated because I think battery wouldn't be sensitive enough because, you know, some people want a lot of onions, some people don't want much at all. If we can avoid motors by all means, that's the best option. No electronics, my friend. This challenge seems very, very basic, yeah, very simple. It's not something that requires two days of build. Get a couple Wait, let's of not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, well, I mean. Start saying that, that's when you start messing up. Should we put it in a tube and see what it looks like? Try it rotate sure. it It's getting stuck. Uh, it's not all moving. staying there. Oh, it's not moving. That's a big issue. Uh, we can simply use some kind of machine that you push it. This is a handle. The onions come to here, to this tool, we put the onion here, you push it. So again, you've got the green team uh, coming up with ideas, talking about and making even a prototype as they're coming up with ideas, not just drawings. And then um, they realize that, hey, the tube and the screw is not really pushing the onions through. So then Tomas here, he comes up with a different idea where we can do a, a kind of a pushing mechanism. We so we have our onions. How's it working? It's not, it's not great. Can you have some in the grinder? Yes. Yeah, so look, they have they have ridges, ridges in there. It looks like it's grabbing a lot more. It's not getting stuck in such a smooth tubing as this. Because this is so smooth that you can see the onions are just basically spinning around. The ridges like do some sort of like catching with it. So it pushes them forward. What if we... So again, it's the purple team. So keep that in mind as you're writing down in the right spots. Uh, so at first they had a drawing. They had an idea. They really liked it. And they were started developing that solution and made a little prototype with the sawing of the, the plastic tubing. And that just like the green team, they realized that, hey, the onions aren't really moving through the tube as they had hoped. So now they're trying to come up, um, you know, going back to their generating ideas of how to fix that problem. And they're looking at pre-existing materials, doing a little re research and figuring out, you know, well, there's ridges in this in this meat grinder and maybe that's something we need. And so we're gonna talk about that right now. Experimented in making the tube out of another material, maybe like make it out of a mesh or something. Ooh, and then it self drains. If you wanna cut like a, a rectangle and then just bend it into a vape. Perfect. Ah! Oh, wow. The 
the triangular shape is not efficient because it gets caught in the middle. Yeah, I think we, it would probably end up being more of a U. And then we have our mesh thing. Onion juice collects in here. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> and then the onions are all in here. What do you guys make? If you have your hot dog, you just go, and you have onions on it. So you've got a, a, a plug in there with a bar, so you're like, right. okay. I like that bolt action idea. That's that's nice and simple and hand operated. Trezon and Jason, what are you guys working on? We were thinking the hopper should do some sort of drying process. So oh, drying. Yeah. What did you think? Of this? I thought you said drying. So the onions would travel down a mesh path by gravity. So the onions are coming into here, and what happens is there's going to be an opening on there. What I want you guys to be really careful of on this is communicating a lot with Nick and Tomas and being very, very clear what the interface is going to be like. Where does your hopper connect to their tube and how? Uh, a major point of failure in a lot of engineering designs, and especially what happens on Design Squad, is that you guys section out and work on the separate modules and get them done nicely, but there's no clear interface between them. And that's where it's really going to be key to make sure. All right, so that was the green team, and we're getting ready to transition to the purple team again. Uh, but just notice that they were creating some prototypes of their plunger, uh, and the, the host really liked that idea. They had split up the uh, parts that they were doing and the one, two of them were working on the hopper and two of them were working on the, the plunger. Um, and he just made a comment that I think is very important because Project Lead the Way does like to do this where uh, they require a, a product to be created or a project to be created or completed with people in different classes. And what this does is it forces you as a student to communicate what you did that day, pass that information on to the other class and vice versa. When they work on it, they have to kind of look at your notes, learn from what you did. And then once they're done, pass on that information over to you um, for your next class. So that is something you could experience in this class coming up later in the year. But things work. You can throw a button on there and then you just put like a motor there and place it back. So you don't even have to go through like the horrible, horrible pain of turning this. Because who wants that? I don't have time for that. I need my onions on my hot dogs now. We have huge batteries. Oh, why yeah. not? The purple team is going automatic. The hopper will guide onions down into the auger. Batteries will power a motor that turns the auger to dispense the onions. So the longer you run the motor, the more onions you'll get. A stainless steel enclosure supports the motor and keeps the onions clean. And a pan on the bottom will collect the juice and the overflow of onions. We need to get a motor set up. I think this might be the speed we want. So again, purple team, we didn't see everything that they did because again, we're, we're they're, uh, the producers of the video are cutting it down a little bit, but they started saying, okay, well, this is our list, making a list of things we need to get accomplished and then assigning uh, who's gonna get those things accomplished. So that's always a good practice to make sure uh, everybody knows what they're assigned to do and everybody has a job to do. I'm trying to make a framework for our mesh. It's going to go inside the hopper where the onions are going to slide over, and then we can easily adjust the angle. The onions are not moving. The angle has to be up more. No, that's not good. Our idea generally works with smoother surfaces. But this is a mesh. There's insane amounts of friction. And we're just learning that. So again, they corrected, uh, this is a green team, and they uh, created a model using cardboard and cheaper materials, something they can work with rather quickly. They create this model, and, and we're trying out some ideas that they had. And they realized that, hey, because of it being a mesh and not a smooth surface, there's a lot of friction there, and the onions aren't sliding down like they expected them to do into their um, where they're going to be dispensed. So they got to go back to generating some ideas. Let's see what happens. We need to come up with a new design. <laughs> I wasn't sure who was you at the end. Thank <laughs> you. 
So right here, there's going to be the button that's going to activate our whole auger bit. When the button is not pressed, we actually don't have a complete circuit. But as soon as you press down on it, you complete the circuit. Electricity runs all the way through there, back into the motor, the battery, all that runs. As soon as you let it go, it's off. So I just need to solder on these wires. Yeah, we'll get the job done. Oh, so cool! Dude, you did a very nice job on the motor. The motor's pretty powerful, you can feel it. Can we try some onions in there and see what it looks like? Ready? Yeah. Well, it's working. Yeah. I have a new idea for the hopper. All right, the front is here. So our hopper comes down, and I'm assuming all of this is polycarbonate. So we're seeing onions everywhere. Green Team's design is manual. An onion hopper will be connected to the plunger mechanism. Onions will be gravity fed through a slot filling a section of the plunger tube. When the plunger pulls forward, it dispenses all of the onions in the tube onto the hot dog. The stainless steel enclosure will have stops on the back that limit the forward and backward travel of the plunger. And a drawer underneath will catch any juice that drains from the hopper. All right, so this is the green team and they're, you know, they're making another model. They're trying to be a little bit more precise about their hopper. Uh, they're probably going to use these cardboard pieces to uh, actually design the stainless steel pieces later on. So they'll have something to, you know, draw on uh, and kind of trace out their design onto a piece of metal, actual size. <laughs> Oh, that's much better. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. It's working great, guys. So it stops right there. And from here, you can have a full amount of onions coming into our hole. And then after, push it forward and it pushes all the onions out onto the hot dog. It just goes back and forth. You guys like to see my invention? Open it. Oh, so much. And the onions are going to fall in. And then when you close it, it seems to work. It seems to work, yes. And that doesn't take a lot of force to push no. it down. I think it's also important to point out how they're trying to be neat and they're keeping their onions over top of a container. Uh, they're not just doing things real quickly. They actually plan and get the bowl underneath of their work so that the juices and everything is not making a mess because ultimately that's going to cost you more time and have to make you have to clean up and use time to clean up. So take the time ahead of time to get ready and, and catch any messes first. Um, let's go make the box. This. The other two don't really know what they're doing. Kind of afraid to ask. Might get Jason's <laughs> nagging. Can't deal with that. Should have made this out of cardboard. It's all right. Causing us problems right now, so it's not all right. Well, why? Because we can't figure it out. I'm ready to kill someone. I am cutting out the. All right. So in the green team, we just left them. You can see some team uh, conflict, I guess, going on. Not necessarily agreeing with everything that's happening, but you know, letting some things go, and you know, people trying to figure out how to get through it together. The little groove that, as the auger spins, and it's bringing all of the onions down. We'll go around thusly. That's a little small. I need the raw onions will fall right onto the hot dog. <laughs> Great. Hey, you know, high five. Have you washed your hands? Oh, 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 you, you know, no, 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 no
Dewey did look a little overwhelmed with all the, the estrogen floating around. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the only guy on the team. They throw some elements at me that I'm not sure what's going on. So yeah, I keep getting surprised and in a good way, though. But we're not going to let him, you know, just lean on us because he's in the lead. Yeah, I guess, I guess now I am in the lead, aren't I? I'd be lying if I said it in, like, with only a couple of challenges left that uh, I didn't have a chance. You know, he has to, he has to pull his weight. So, yeah. I feel like we're not a team in this challenge. I feel like we're all... All right, so the Purple team just kind of start stopped their conversation about their first day of work. And so as the season goes on in this TV show, what it was is they got points. If your team won, you got so many points. And they are not always together... Uh, in the same team. So, you know, the four people that are on a team kind of rotates. Anyway, you've got, with a few episodes left, you got um, some people that are in the lead in the points thing. And they, I think they earn a scholarship or something like that. So uh, that's kind of what they were just talking about. Kind of like independent about it. And we shouldn't be because we're in teams for a reason, right? So like, I don't see anything wrong with the way it works. Especially since you're standing right next to me, you can't really knock you. Oh, how nice of you. So you just don't want to hurt my feelings. You just, just, nothing to scared. Say. Stop trying to provoke stuff for no reason. I feel like you're afraid. You're always sassy. No, I just want to know. You're always sassy. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, so we saw that. We saw a couple looks and stuff, and you can feel that at the end of the day, they are um, talking a little bit about the frustrations that are starting to bubble up in the green team. And the one lady is talking about how she feels like everybody's doing their own thing and they're not really working as a team. And the one guy is like, yeah, I don't see any problem. But we also know that he gave us some dirty looks that was caught on camera earlier. So let's keep going, day two. If we can get the bottom to extend it out further, we can flip that up on the side. Oh, and, and that's the beginning of the collecting tray. A collecting tray, yeah. We take a piece of sheet metal. to go. I don't think we can do it any farther with the finger break unless your sheer brute force is able to do it, Dewey. Very nice. Okay, that's fine. Hey, Dewey, check it out. Ooh. I found this out in the shop and I was thinking this would be the grading for our juice tray. So if you're writing down some descriptions, um, I think this was the purple team. They've been using a brake, which helps bend metal. And they've also been using a bandsaw, which helped cut through that plastic grate that we just saw. Um, but also they used it to cut through some of the metal as well. So again, that was bandsaw and a brake to bend the metal. This is just gonna sit right on top of them. I can now take the grate out and put it back in ever so easily. So the Board of Health will be very pleased with our design. Right now we're making a box and you kind of don't know what yeah. it is. Like if you approach it, you'd be like, it's a big shiny yeah. stainless steel box. What am I gonna get when I put my hand underneath and push yeah. the button? <laughs> like make the front clear? Yeah, so you can see that it's onions. Piece they made. It looks like a fish pretty good. Yeah, I like that, Kim. That looks really good. So, from here, we're going to drill the two holes that need to go through the face and the back of our box that the onion dispenser tube will go through. I don't know, it's like 
one piece and then three pieces and then one piece and then like a whole bunch comes down and then again one piece, so, three so, pieces. So it's a surprise second. every punch. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get a building for it. So here's the face and that's the polycarbonate. And on the other side is the mesh. Please fit. It fits, it's right? So green team is now building and they're you know using materials the polycarbonate which is the clear plastic and the mesh to help uh, allow some of the juices to drain out i think it's out of the back of their hopper and then down into their their pan at the bottom it's good So you can see both in the green and the purple team, they're testing things out as they're building it, testing um, their solution and making sure to make any fine adjustments that they need or, or no, notice any adjustments they need to make before they get too far. Okay. So we're going to weld this? I suppose we should. It's probably the best way to do it. Okay. And the welding machine we go. All right. to the motor, the motor will be over here, and on this side, we'll spin it and push the onions out. This is the plunger system. The rod is going to bend around into... All right, so we just left the purple team, and again, you can see where they're uh, giving out assignments and talking to different people about what their jobs are going to be doing and what they're going to be doing. Um, so they're working through with different tools. They've used drills, uh, the spot welder, things like that the box and then on this side we're going to have a lever so when you pull the lever forward uh the onions will come out when you push it back it'll reload the onion chamber and uh, then you can push it forward to get some more onions Oh, 
So I think des uh, designing an art is also part of the design process. I don't think that art doesn't have a part of, of what we do. What things look good, people will use, people will buy. If it doesn't look good, people ne won't necessarily buy it or use it. I want some onions. And I got some onions. Okay, guys, can we try this box in there for a sec? Uh, yeah, yeah. Need, uh, something here. <laughs> <laughs> you got one amazing raw onion peeling machine. We're going to pull the front into the front All right, so now they're here at back with their client and they're getting ready to present their solution to their client and see what happens. Go ahead and write that down if you don't have any. If you do more than five descriptions, guys, you do get extra credit. So maybe I should have mentioned that earlier. Sorry about that. Hey, dog man, hey. when you got my onion dispensers ready? They're right here. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. So we got green team up first. Go ahead, let's see how it works. All you have to do is push the lever back, put onions fall into the chamber, push it forward. If you need more, you can just keep on putting more on. That you never waste any. Oh, look at that, that's all right. No juice, perfect amount of onions every time. But more because you want, dog man. All right, purple team's up next. It's electric, you just push a button and the onions come out at the bottom. Let's say when you have enough onions. When? Wow, all right. <laughs> what do you think? It's good. So it's going to be between the touch of a button and the pull of a lever. You made it a bet team win. I like this one better. Why? This one's better. Why? Because it's easier. I like this one better because you can control how much you put on the onion. You just push the button, it comes out. Every time you do this, if you pull too much, then too many onions will come out and it's just a waste. Woo! We are here at the dog pile. It is the onion dispenser challenge. We're going to announce the grand prize winner. Dogman is going to do the honors. And the winner is the purple team. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you thought. I, I honestly thought that the uh, purple team was putting out too much onions, but the people have spoken. When they came and actually used it, they liked that better. Uh, and they were able to learn how to press the button to the right amount of time to get the amount of onions that they liked. Uh, so it was interesting. All right, let's go back and look at... Oh, I got to do it this way. Sorry about that. Back to that. Then. All right, so let's go and look at the uh, the worksheet that we're working on. So make sure you've uh, filled in your descriptions. You should have at least five for the green team and then five over here for the purple team. You There is space for others in case you write bigger, you need more space, or um, you want to do more than five and you get those extra credit points. 
don't forget to put your numbers here. Again, this is not numbers as in order, but numbers as relates to the design process up here. So if you think that they were doing something that was part of step three, you would put a three there. If you thought they were doing something that was part of step six, you would put a six in this column here, okay? And the last thing that you're gonna do is go ahead and uh, fill out these questions. Did any team member have disagreements? Actually, you guys can read these through uh, and go through them. Uh, and then working as a team is important. So we got some teamwork questions and then which team won the challenge. And so we know that the uh, purple team won the challenge and explain why you think they were successful, not only in what the customer wanted or the client wanted, but also in their process that they used. Did that make them successful in any way? All right, so go ahead and fill this document. Once you're done that, go ahead and turn it in Google Classroom or into the bin in the classroom, depending whether you're virtual or hybrid. So let me know if you have any questions in the chats. And thank you for doing this lesson.